41 South and Oakdale Church Road on the right hand side, you'll find our church. Right at the corner when you make the right turn, there's a big red and white building. It's called the Old Red Thompson Station. You can't miss us. We're located on the right hand side. We own all that property there on the right hand side. If you pass Oakdale Church Road, the very next landmark you will see on your left is the White House Fire Station. Turn around in the fire station parking lot. Come back and make the first left turn and turn right, right into our parking lots. Our Sunday morning services are at 8 a.m. sharp. Praise and worship starts at 8 a.m. We have Tuesday evening Bible study at 7.30. We have the Hour of Power Prayer on Thursday from 6 to 7. All of our services are open to the public. There's no admission. They're free. Come, join us at the church. We love people at basic training. If you like the teaching, the way I teach the word here on this program, I teach the word the same way at our church. Come and join us. We love to have you in a live service. This is the place where Jesus lives. This is the place where the word is first place. And the word has a voice. According to Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're going to have ministry and music now by Brother James before we begin to teach. Brother James. Walk with my sister. 
walk with me, oh Lord, all along the tedious journey, oh Lord, I want Jesus, yeah, to walk with me. Walk with my brother, walk with me. You walk with my brother, walk with me along the tedious journey. Oh, Lord, I want Jesus. To walk with me Thank you, Brother Jim Praise the Lord Amen Jesus will walk with you, my friend He said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you I will be with you until the end He says his word, heaven and earth will pass away But his word would endure forever. Amen. Well, get your Bibles. Let's frighten the devil. Hold your Bible up. Shake it at the devil. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I'll be better today after hearing the word. I covenant in my heart not to be a hearer only, but a doer thereof, in Jesus' name, amen. Give Jesus a shout if you mean that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, get your pad, get your pen. You're going to want to take some notes. We're talking about prayer. We're going to continue to talk about prayer. Today is August the 10th, 2016. August the 10th, 2016. So if you're taking notes, get your notepad. We're going to do a slight review before we get into this evening's class. And we're going to move forward. Now, remember, I want you to follow along with me in the Bible. Make sure, first of all, that we're reading from the Bible. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Some of my words will sound a little different than yours, but that's okay. We're going to end up in the same place. But I do want you to make sure that we're studying from the Bible. Amen. This is God's Word. And we're studying line upon line. Here a little, there a little. And we are rightly dividing the word. We've asked the Holy Spirit to help us to rightly divide the word. Now, because you can rightly divide the word, you can wrongly divide the word. So you follow along with me. We're going to do this together. And we're going to go down, get into God's word. And remember, God and his word are one. So the more of the word we get, the more of God we get. We're going to do a review from last time we were together. Last time we were together... We were talking about uh, prayer, how uh, the model of prayer that Jesus taught, I believe, is where we left off. And we looked over there in Matthew chapter 6, and you probably got this in your uh, notes. If you don't, you can catch up. We always like to do a review because we have new listeners, uh, new people have chimed in on the Internet, new people are uh, tuned in to 89.5 on the FM dial, and we have new people that are watching on the local channel, television, television channel 14.2 and 14.5. So we want you to have continuity in your learning without any breaks. So this is one of the reasons we do a review. It may be redundant to some of you, but, you know, I, I remember when I was in school, I learned a lot from review because I didn't always hear it the first time that the teacher taught it. Uh, maybe I was distracted. Maybe uh, uh, I was uh, daydreaming. Whatever the case may be. I didn't always get it the first time I heard it. So review has always helped me, and, and God gave it to me this way. So uh, in my teaching method, I always do a review before I go into new material. So we got over there. Turn with me uh, to Matthew chapter number 6, <clears throat> and we're going to start the review at Matthew chapter number 6 uh, together. Matthew chapter number 6, and we looked at verse, we started reading at verse 9. Matthew 6, verse 9. And this uh, uh, 
This is the model prayer. Let's set this up for you a little bit. The disciples had asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And so he gave them a model of how to pray. And it's commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. However, this is not the Lord's Prayer. This is a model of how to pray. In other words, when you pray to God, what Jesus was telling his disciples, incorporate all these things in your prayer when you talk to God. Okay, so this is a model of how to pray, and this is not the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Matthew chapter number 6, and we started reading at verse number 9, and it's in the red, so Jesus is speaking. Here's what he says. In this manner, therefore, pray. What do you pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? Then verse 11 goes on to say, Give us this day our daily bread. And then he says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, this is the way Jesus taught the disciples to pray. He says, after this manner, therefore pray ye our Father. And we just went through it. Now, the greatest prayer ever prayed was prayed by the greatest man who ever lived. And there are about 23 different elements in the Lord's Prayer. And it's all inclusive and it's exhaustive. The first element in the Lord's Prayer or the model of prayer is relationship. Our Father. The second is location, which are in heaven. Number three is adoration. Hallowed be thy name. For anticipation, thy kingdom come. Five, consecration, thy will be done. Number six, universality in earth. Number seven, conformity as it is in heaven. Number eight, supplication. Give us. Number nine, definiteness. This day. Number ten, necessity. Our daily bread. Number eleven, patience. And forgive us. Twelve, obligation. Our debts. Thirteen, forgiveness. As we forgive. Number 14, love and mercy, our debtors. Number 15, guidance and lead us. And number 16, protection, not into temptation. Number 17, salvation, but deliver us. Number 18, Righteousness, we know that means right standing with God. Righteousness from evil. Number 19, faith, for thine is the kingdom. Number 20, humility and the power. 21, majesty and the glory. 22, timeless, forever. And then let's affirm that with affirmation. Amen. So these were 23 elements of the prayer, of the model prayer that Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. Now, how was great prayer born? Well, prayer was born out of the request by the disciples to our Lord. He said, Lord, teach us to pray. Let's see that in the Bible. Go over there real quick 
and, and see where they asked that. Luke chapter number 11 with me. Luke chapter number 11. Um, look at verse number 1. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he went into what we just went through. Verse 2, he says, so he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And that's the model prayer that he taught them. So we know, and I said earlier, that that has often been referred to as the Lord's Prayer. How, now, we often are dependent upon others as were the disciples on Jesus to pray. But, dear friends, we must learn to pray for ourselves. You ask someone to pray for you, and I love to pray for people. People ask me to pray for them a lot, and I do pray for them. My, my philosophy is when they ask me to pray, I pray right now. I don't put it off later. Uh, I have a lot of things going on. I'm, I'm quite busy in my life, and, and I don't want to forget anybody's prayer request. So when you ask me to pray, let's do it right now because the time we have is right now. See, tomorrow isn't promised, later isn't promised, but we do have right now. So, dear friends, if someone requests a, a, a prayer request of you, pray with them then while you have the, the moment. Pray that moment. So, uh, Jesus gave the disciples this prayer as a model and not a mold. Incorporate these things in your prayer. Identify who you're praying to. Identify, establish a relationship. Our Father. Where, where is he located? In heaven. And you want to worship him. Hallowed be thy name. And you want to invite him to come to earth. Thy kingdom come. In earth as it is in heaven. See, and so what happens is God now has permission to come down here on the earth and intercede and interact on our behalf because he's been invited in. God, God will not, because God is a God of order, God will not just rush into the earth and take charge. Because remember over there in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he made man in his image and his likeness, and he gave them dominion, remember? Rulership, caretakership, not ownership, but rulership of the earth. So God has to be invited in. That's why Jesus was instructing the disciples to identify where God is and who he is and then invite him in. Amen. And so uh, when our father is exalted, we said, uh, he's exalted the father. That's what Jesus always did. He's exalted the father in his sonship. So we should be exalted the father in our sonship. We're not servants. We're sons. Look at, look at how he does it. Look, to, look over here with me in John chapter number 17. John chapter 17. And I want you to find verse 4. John, you should have these in your notes. We're just reviewing right now. John chapter 17 verse 4. Look what, look what Jesus said. He says, I have, it's in the red, so Jesus is speaking, correct? He says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, verse 5, O Lord... O oh, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you be when? Before the world was. See, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word took on flesh and came into the earth. That was Jesus. And that's what he was telling his daddy. Let's go back to like it was before, before there was even a world. It was just you and I. Amen. And so... He saw God as being one with himself. And that's what we have to do when we pray. We have to see ourselves being one with God. Amen. Because we're inviting him in and he's inviting us in. See, God established prayer. We, ta we taught this earlier in this prayer session. God established prayer so that we could communicate with him. And he could communicate with us. Remember, communication is a two-way street. You talk, the other person listen. The other person talk. You listen. If you're doing all the talking and no listening, there is no communication. Not effective communication. 
Effective communication is a two-way street. So I told you earlier in this series, when you pray, don't just jump up and leave. Sit for just a little while and let God answer you back or speak back to you. That's communicating. And that's what prayer was established to do, to speak to God. Amen. And so uh, right there in John, you're in John 17. Go down to verse 21 and see how Jesus saw his father. John 17 and 21. Here's what it says. It's in the red, so Jesus is still speaking. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us and that the world may believe that you sent me. Now, this is getting over there towards the Lord's prayer. His prayer was that we may be one as he and the Father one. Now, that's the Lord's prayer. That's what he prayed. That we would be one as he and his father are one. Amen. Now, he reverenced, as you saw in his model of prayer, he reverenced the name of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. See, prayer, well, you're right there in John 17. Look at verse 26. See how he reverenced the name of God. John 17 and 26. He says, and I have declared to them your name and will declare it that love, that the love which you love me may be in them and I in them. See, he reverenced the name of God. Prayer, we say, it brings us into sonship. We're not servants. We're not slaves. We're sons. And prayer brings us in to sonship. You see, Jesus had a kingdom relationship in prayer. And so should we. We should have a kingdom relationship in prayer. Which are in heaven. Remember the model of prayer? The kingdom of heaven is where? Within us. <coughs> Excuse me. The kingdom of heaven is within us. You're right there in Luke. Go back up to verse uh, 21. Luke 17, 21. The kingdom of heaven is within us. Look what Luke 17, 21 says. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be one in us. See, he and the Father are one. That the world may believe that you sent me. See? That's Jesus' prayer. See, the throne of God must be in our hearts. All right? Look at how Paul described that over there in Romans. Go, go, run over there real quick to Romans uh, chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And when you get there, let's look at verse number 8. Romans 10, 8. Very familiar scripture, uh, but I want us to read it together. Romans 10 and 8. Here's what it says. But for what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. What is that, Pastor? That is the word of faith which we preach. And verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, why does it work like that? Verse number 10 explains it. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, right standing with God. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's how it works. So, but what we have to do is we must crown, see, we must crown him king of our lives, him being Jesus. We must make him number one. 
See, God won't take second place in your life, dear friend. God is a first place God. And he told us way on early on, I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Have no other gods before me. He, he will not take second place. He's a first place kind of God. And if you don't want to give him first place, he won't be part of you. Amen. He gives us first place. He gave us his only begotten son to redeem us back into himself. Jesus gave his first and only life so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So God is not playing around. He is a first place God. And that's the way he operates. He says, have no other God, nothing, nobody, not anything above me. That's just pretty straightforward. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. He's telling you. Have no other God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all his ways. And then, all these things, what things, whatsoever you desire when you pray, will be added unto you. But you got to seek God and his righteousness first. We got to crown him king of our lives. Look over there at John chapter 18. We went there last time, but I want you to see it uh, in, in, uh, in review so they can be fresh in your minds and in your hearts. God is God all by himself. And he's a, he's a loving God. He's a patient God. And he's all seeing, all knowing, omniscient, and I'm not present. I mean, omniscient means he knows everything. I'm not present means he's everywhere at the same time, all the time. John chapter number 18. Go there with me, please. And uh, let's pick up verse 37. John chapter number 18, verse 37. Here's what it says. When you got it, write it down now if you can't find it as fast as I can. Because you need to go back. I would suggest that you go back in your Bible study time and read these scriptures. Really bless you. You'll grow thereby in the things of the Lord. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king? Now listen to Jesus' answer. Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone is of the truth. Here's my voice. And then Pilate goes on to tell him this. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. Pilate didn't find any fault in Jesus. And nor were you, my friend, nor with you. See, Jesus taught honor to God's name. He says, hollow, as he was teaching the disciples, he says, hollow be thy name. Honor the name of God. Because in that name, Every knee must bow. Every tongue shall confess. All the power is invested in the name of Jesus. Jesus taught about the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. In his model prayer. Jesus also taught about God's will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught prayer for our daily bread. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus taught divine forgiveness in this prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As we forgive, this is the acid test. As we forgive. See, dear friends, if you won't, don't forgive, God won't forgive you. And all of us at some point in our lives have needed and do need and will need forgiveness. So the acid test is to forgive. And then God will forgive you. Amen. <laughs> See, in prayer, all resentment and evil must flee. Pastor, say that again. When you earnestly pray to God, all resentment and evil must flee. Must, you, must, you must let it go. All resentment and evil speaking of people, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. God is a God of order, and that's out of order. 
Okay. Look over here with me in Luke chapter number five. Let's see how Jesus said it. Luke chapter number five. Look at verse 14 with me. Luke chapter five, verse 14. Luke chapter five, verse 14. Here's how Jesus said it. And he charged him to tell no more. Luke chapter 5. I stand corrected. Go to Luke 45. Well, f before you go there, uh, go to Luke 14. That's what I'm trying to get you to. We've got a couple of things I want to show you in Luke. But let's look at the... Let's look at uh, Luke, um, Luke 6, 14 first. Let's go there first. Luke chapter 6 and verse 14. And then we'll, we'll go to uh, Luke 45, Luke 6, 45. Luke 6 and 14. Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Here's what he said. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Matthew 14 is where that is read. For your note taken, we just read Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, I want you to go to Luke 6, 45. That's where I want you to end up at. Luke chapter number 6 and verse 45. We're talking about prayer, and we're doing a slight review before we get into um, tonight's lesson. Luke chapter 6, verse 45, and here's what that says. Jesus is still speaking. It's in the red. He says, a good man, a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings forth good and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth evil. Why is that? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. In other words, dear friend, what you have in a plentiful supply or an abundance, a lot of, in your heart, when you open up your mouth, that's what's going to come out. Now, I remember years ago, years ago, people would say, uh, someone would say something that would, would be very straightforward or very frank to another person, and perhaps they had been uh, drinking or exercising uh, their arm with alcohol, drinking alcohol, and they were intoxicated. And someone would say, oh, no, they just drinking, or they just drunk. But out of the real truth of that is, out of the abundance of your heart, whether it be good treasure or evil treasure, your mouth will speak. Amen. And that's what Jesus is teaching here. So whatever's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth eventually. Whatever's in there in abundance, a lot of, plenty, will come out. So make sure you're filled up with the word. Make sure you got the word down on the inside. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you're praying, you got to give up all resentment. You got to forgive. You got to let bygones be bygones. Jesus taught in the prayer module our dependence upon God's strength. He, uh, in, the, in the model of prayer, he, he says, lead us not into temptations. Give us your protection, Lord. We need you. We, we can't do it on our own. We need your help. So lead us not into temptation. And, uh, but deliver us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from from evil. See, this verse speaks of salvation. Deliver us from evil. Save us, Lord. 
Save us from evil tidings. Uh, it speaks of salvation and also of righteousness, which means what? Right standing with God. So uh, Jesus had a vision of the world, dominion in prayer. He saw the whole world praying, knowing that that was communicating with God. See, um, for thine is the kingdom, he says, and the power and the glory. The glory is all of God. You don't have anything to do with the glory. It's of God. It's of God. It is God, and it's his glory. Hallelujah. We saw over there last time, uh, you, for your note taking, you can take this, 1 Peter 5, 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You, you hear that? For him, to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, the, the power, dear friends, is everything that God is. God is power. Hallelujah. Without God, there is no power. Amen. Forever. Forever. There is an enduring, eternal quality of petition forever. And we see that over there when Abraham was promised. Abraham was made a promise by God. Turn real quick. Romans chapter 4. I want you to see that real quick. Romans chapter 4, and then we're going to get into the evening's class. Romans chapter 4, and I want you to, to, to go with me down to verse 20. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Here's what it says. He did not waver at the promise. King James Version said didn't stagger. He did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. In other words, he was, he was solid as a rock. He took God at his word. He didn't even stagger. He didn't waver. Oh, dear friends, that's where we got to be. That's where we got to get to. Not, we, we read God's word. It's first place in our life. It's second place. And it's last place. In other words, God's place, God's word is where it is. If we see it in the word, God said it, that sells it, it's done. Listen, verse 20, Romans 4.20, Abraham. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. How was he, Pastor? But was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he who, what God had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness, right standing with God. Oh, church, that's, that's where we, that's where we want to be. Don't even stagger the promises of God. They're so magnanimous, our heads can't even wrap around it. We can't, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't seen the things that God has in store for you and I, friend. But prayer is how we get this exchange between God and ourselves. Tonight, we're going to talk about our our topic tonight is how Jesus personally prayed. See, Jesus came to be our example. He came to redeem us, to save us, and then he, he taught us how to live this Christian life. And so Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer, dear friends. You search the scripture, the four gospels, you'll see that Jesus always went away to pray. He prayed a lot. So much that he, he, he inspired Paul to write that men ought to pray without ceasing. So that doesn't mean praying all the time. Because what is prayer? Communicating with God. You talking to God, God talking to you. God talking to you, you talking back to God. It's communications. Two-way street. So Paul says we are to pray without ceasing. That word ceasing means stopping. Pray continually. All the time. 24-7 you ought to pray. Amen. Amen. How Jesus personally prayed. Let's, let's go over there to Matthew uh, 26. Let's get a snapshot of it. Matthew chapter number 26. Find verse 41 when you get to Matthew. Matthew 26 and 41. It's in the red, so 
Jesus is still speaking. Would you believe it if Jesus said it? Okay. He's speaking. It's in the red. Here's what he said. He said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. And then he goes on to say, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he was talking to the disciples, the disciples over there. Uh, read verse 42 with me. Again, a second time he went away and prayed saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. It sounded like he was a little aggravated, but he already said up there, Indeed, the Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Friends, when you, when you, when you develop a prayer life, you have to press. It's like studying your Bible. When you make a decision that you're going to read a passage of Scripture first thing in the morning and a passage of Scripture the last thing at night before you close your eyes, I'm telling you all hell break loose and come against you. Because the devil don't want you to get that word down on the inside in your spirit, man. He knows it's going to bring havoc. It's going to upset. It's going to shake up the kingdom of darkness when you get the word on the inside. Because when you speak the word, the word is created. Remember? The world was dark and void without light and God spoke. He says, let there be light. What happened? Light was. Remember over there in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 he said, let us make man how? In our image and our likeness. John chapter 4 verse 24 Jesus describing God. He says God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, you made his image and his likeness, so we're spirits. That's why the scripture tells us we are to call those things that be not as though they were. We have to speak words, dear friend. Not hope it, not wish it, not moan and cry about it. We have to speak words. That's what God did. The world was framed with words. He spoke words and thing came into development. So it is with us. Oh, get a hold of this church. Get a hold of this. It'll bless you real good. We've got to begin to speak words and prayer is speaking to God and him speaking back to us. Very important. Very important part of the Christian life. Prayer. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Because this is our connector with God, Jehovah. So, Jesus Christ, we know, was the Son of God. He believed in prayer. He showed himself to be a person of dramatic and persistent prayer. Prayer was indispensable in his mission, and it should be in our lives and our mission. If it was indispensable for Jesus Christ, our leader, it should be indispensable for us. Amen? So I think this is a very important session to be teaching on prayer because it's the way we communicate. It's the way we receive from God, Jehovah, is through prayer. The prayer life of Jesus, as we study out the scriptures, we found that it was somewhat of a law with him. It was something that he did on a regimented basis. It was like a law. He had to pray to the Father to get his strength every day. So he didn't slack off prayer. It was like a law. 
stayed right on his back, and he stayed on top of it. See? That's, that's how we got to begin to see it. And once we begin to see it that way, the Holy Spirit will help us to develop a strong prayer life. Amen. We saw over there when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in Matthew 3, uh, how he prayed. We saw again uh, at the transfiguration over there in Matthew chapter number 7. And at the Garden of Gethsemane, remember when Jesus prayed great drops of blood? We see again his consistency to pray. And at the cross over there in, in Luke chapter 23, we, we saw how Jesus prayed at the cross. So his life was consistent with prayer. Jesus prayed before daybreak. Go with me over there to Mark chapter number 1. Mark chapter number 1. And when you find Mark 1, find verse 35 with me. Mark chapter number 1 and verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. Because for, the pur for, for this purpose, I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Now, you see Jesus on a mission. But he always prayed. He spent the entire night praying. He went out to the mountains and he prayed and he continued all night to pray. So we, 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 we get now, we're getting our instructions on how to pray and we're following Jesus' example. Prayer was Jesus' communion, you see. It was, it was inspiration and it was strength. See, he always prayed to the Father from whence he came. That was his source. So it is with us. Jesus is our intercessor. He's sitting at the Father's right hand now. He's not just sitting there le leisurely. He's working. He's interceding on our behalf. And so when we pray to Jesus, we pray to God in the name of Jesus, then we'll have our petition if we pray according to the will. His will is the Bible. If we pray, 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, the Bible, then he hears us. Okay? So now we're sure he hears us because we ask according to his will. Now, because we know that he hears us, then we have that thing we ask for and our petition that we ask for. Oh, get a hold of that, dear friends. Get a hold of that. And then now you won't have to beg and plead and cry asking God for something when you've done it the right way. You've asked according to his will. Get in the Bible and see where he's promised you help according to Matthew 8, 17. According to 1 Peter 2, 24, he promised you that you were healed. Now, get in the Bible and say that to him. That's his will. Acts 10, 38, how he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And he went about healing all those that were oppressed by the devil. Now, you can ask according to his will, and he will hear you. And because he hear you, dear friends, you'll have the petition that you ask for. That's powerful. That's powerful. But as believers, we need to know this. And more especially, we need to operate in this to get your spiritual needs met. Over there in Matthew, go with me over there again to Matthew chapter, you're right there in Mark. 
go one book up to Matthew. Now write the scriptures down so you can have them for your personal Bible study. Matthew chapter number uh, 26. Matthew chapter number 26. And then I want you to find verse 41. Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus is still speaking. And he gives us some instructions here. It's in the red. So Jesus is speaking. Matthew chapter 26 and then find verse 41. Matthew 26, 41. Here's what it says. He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. See, these are instructions. You got to have your eyes to watch with, right? So you, he's telling us to be aware. So we can't be hoodwinked by the devil. Watch. Look, he says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And then a second witness to that we find over there in Luke chapter number 18. Remember the biblical standard? Let every fact be established by two or more witnesses. We saw here in Mark 26, 41, Jesus speaking. He says, you ought to pray, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Now I want you to go with me over to Luke chapter number 18. Luke, you're right there in Mark. Go, go down to Matthew. Go down to, you're in Matthew, go to Mark, then down to Luke. Now I want you to go to Luke, and I want you to find chapter 18, 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke 18 and 1, here's what it says. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Men ought to always pray. Men ought to always pray. Men ought to always pray and not lose heart. Saying. So we got to pray without ceasing. That's how you summarize that. See, prayer did not have second place with Jesus Christ. In Jesus' life, Jesus always gave prayer top priority, as we must. Why? Because prayer is communicating with God. So we must always give prayer top priority. In other words, you, you're not going to receive anything from God unless you pray. This is how you communicate with God Jehovah. Prayer is the avenue that we're able to Access him, and he access us through prayer. So we've got to develop a, an effective prayer life. And we saw the model of prayer that Jesus gave the disciples, how we ought to pray. Identify the Father. Identify who you're talking to. Adore him. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. In earth, invite him in to your earth, you. Thy will be done in heaven, in the earth, as it is in heaven. You want, you want God's will to be done in your life. You're in the earth. Oh, get a hold of this, church. Get a hold of this. I'm telling you, when you begin to pray, you move God. Not with your tears. Not with your tears. Your faith. And you express your faith through prayer. In other words... If you will come to me and say, Pastor, let me have, loan me $1,000. You honor me by asking me to loan you $1,000. First of all, you only ask me because you thought I had or have the ability to grant you the request that you are asking. Well, so it is with God. When we go to God and ask him for something, we are honoring him. So we go to him, our father. See, honor him. Identify who you're talking to. Our father. 
Now, where is he located? Which are in heaven. I praise you. Hallowed be thy name. Got it? See how it works? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. God, you come into the earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Have your way in me. Just like you have your way in heaven. Oh, dear friends, get a hold of this. Now, when you pray in this fashion, you came with humility. You humbled yourself. You recognized the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. You recognized who he was. You worshiped him. You located him. He's in heaven. You're on the earth. And you invited him into the earth, which is in you. And now you make your request known. Father, I need $1,000. Well, the scripture says he know what we have need of, but he says ask. He says seek, that means look. Remember, that's, that's stage number one. That's early prayer. That's baby prayer. See? Then seeking. You're more mature. You begin to know that God is your source, so you begin to look to him. You begin to, to know you don't have to look. You don't have to search out anymore. You know God is the source, so you seek him. And then you ask. You knock at the door. Because you have all confidence that he heard you. And he will deliver you. And he will give you the desires of your heart. See, it's all right here in prayer. And so many of you have been so frustrated. And, and you says, you, you've asked everybody on the planet to pray for you. Because you feel like God is not hearing you when you pray. Well, Dear friends, if you, will, if you will let these words pass your ear gate, get down in your spirit, man, and pray according to, to the way Jesus prayed, or pray according to the way the, the, uh, the model of prayer gives you instructions how to pray, God will answer your prayer every time, dear friends. Because we're praying according to his word, his will. You see that? 1 John 5. 14. This is the confidence we have. Let's turn there. I want you to see it in the Bible. First John. I want you to read it for yourself. First John. We can quote it. First John. Chapter 5. Look at verse 14. We're talking about prayer. How Jesus prayed when he was here on the earth. First John. Chapter 5. Verse 14. Here's what it said. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Anything according to his will. That's the Bible. He hears us. Now, verse 15 goes on to say this. And if we know that he hears us, and we do because we've asked according to his will. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. Dear friends, God is not trying to keep something from you. God is trying to get it to you. But he set up rules and he set up regulations. Okay, we live in a country that's got laws. The average speed limit is 55. Most people drive more than 55. You stand at risk to get a ticket if you're caught speeding over 55. Well, God got rules. He says, if first of all, an example. He says if you bring a tithe, into the storehouse, that place, storehouse is where you're being fed the word, where you're being edified, where you're being built up, where you're learning, and you're learning the things of God. That's the store, that's the house that you're to pay your tithes into. He says, if you'll do that, he says, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you have not room enough to receive. But you got to bring the tithe in first before he opened the windows. See, God is a God of order. See, we want God to open the windows, but we haven't followed the instructions he gave to get the windows open. This scripture says, 1 John 5, 14, if you pray or ask anything according to his will, his will is the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. If you pray and ask anything according to this Bible, that scripture says, he hears you. So you don't have to run all over town, dear friend, to get somebody to pray for you. Because you heard prophet so-and-so was in town. And I love prophets. 
I have personal friends that are prophets. I have a prophet that's speaking to my life. But I know how to pray to God, Jehovah, myself. And I pray to him, and I listen to that small, still voice, and I recognize it. He says, my sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. If you're not praying, dear friend, I, I submit to you that you're not receiving the blessings of the Lord. Because prayer is the communication channel that he opened up for us to talk to him and him to talk back to us. Let's go a little deeper. Now, Jesus prayed. Jesus always gave prayer top priority. Uh, John chapter number 17. I think we've been over there a little couple times this evening. But we're talking about prayer. And this is where uh, Jesus was teaching the prayer. John chapter number 17. And we're going to look at several verses in John 17. First, I want to look at verse number 11. John 17 verse number 11. And here's what it says. John 17, 11, it's in the red. Jesus is still teaching and speaking. He says, now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. See, Jesus prayed and asked his dad to keep us. That, they, that we may be one as he and the Father are one. Now, take a look at verse number 13 with me. That was verse 11. Now, I want you to see verse 13. Here's what he says. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. That they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Now skip to verse number 15. That they may have the joy fulfilled in themselves. Verse 15 says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. See, he didn't ask the Father to take us out of the world. So you're going to have some trials, you're going to have some tribulations. But Jesus said, don't worry about it. I've already overcome the world for your sake. So he didn't ask God to take us out of the world, out of the trials, out of the tribulations. He didn't ask God that. Look what he says. He says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but, okay, he gave me to tell you what he wanted to do now, but that you should keep them from the evil one. See, dear friends, we're being kept. The devil can't, the devil can't hurt you. First of all, our elder brother Jesus beat him to a pup. If you don't know what a pup is, look at the stuff that comes off of orange juice after you've strained it and you get the pure orange juice. That's Pup. That's, that's the residue off the orange juice. That's how Jesus beat the devil to pup. He, he amounted to zero. And so then he reinforced this thing. And he asked his daddy to keep us from the evil one. You see that, dear friends? Jesus is constantly thinking about us. He not only died for us, redeemed us out of the, out of the pawn shop of sin but gave us eternal life and an inheritance. Oh, that's a good place to shout, church. We have an inheritance. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He who was rich became poor. So why? So that we could become rich. And now the Bible says that we're joint heirs together with him. We have an inheritance. Oh, I like that. I like that. Jesus says, whatever the Father has is mine. And my Bible says that you and I that have come into Christ through the confession of our mouth, believing in our heart, that we are joint heirs together with Christ. So I say the same thing Jesus said. Whatever God got, my heavenly father is mine. And I, I, I read the book. And I saw in the book that the heavens, the earth, and the fullness thereof, the silver, the gold, the 10,000 calories, the 10,000 hills that the 10,000 calories are on, all belong to my Father God. And Jesus said, whatever the Father has is mine. 
And the Bible says that me and Jesus are joint heirs. Now, dear friends, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, you can, you can say this too. Stop saying you poor. Because whatever God's got is yours. In fact, the Bible says, let the poor say, I'm rich. Let the weak say that I'm strong. Just say what the word says. Let the sick say that I'm well. You got to get your speaking right. And your thinking, stop thinking dirty thinking, stinking thinking. The devil is robbing you of your blessings through thinking, stinking thinking. You got to get your thinking straight. Think on these things. That's what the word tell us. Whatsoever is good, whatsoever is pure. Think, on the, think according to these things. Look at verse 17, John 17 and 17. Here's what it says. Sanctify them by your truth, Lord. This is the father talking to his daddy about us. Sanctify them, set them apart by your truth. And then he goes on to tell us your word, my daddy's word, talking about God. He's referring to his dad, our heavenly father. He said, your word is truth. And he says, Father, verse 18, as I have, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Look at verse 23, John 17 and 23. Talking about prayer. Jesus still speaking, John 17, verse 23, he says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. And verse 24 sums it up. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me when I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. See how much Jesus loves us? He wants us to be there with him in glory. <laughs> he wants us to see. And just before we have Brother Jimmy to come, Brother James to come and do another song in worship for us. I'd like to make an appeal to you. At this broadcast or telecast, whether you're viewing me uh, on uh, local television channel 14.2 or 14.5, or whether you're listening on the FM dial WLPS 89.5, or if you're streaming live at Billy Lockley Ministry, www.billylockleyministry.com. And this telecast or broadcast has been a blessing to you. If it's adding a measure to your spiritual life, if you're growing thereby, from the study of the word we asked you to donate to this ministry you see this ministry was created and established by brother Billy Locklear who's going on to be with the Lord now he did his time and but he left this great tool to win souls to us it's a great platform to win souls. This is a 24-hour a day, 24-7 Christian network, radio, television, and internet, 24 hours a day. We're reaching over 200 nations around the world with the gospel, the good news of the gospel that saves, that heals, that delivers. But dear friends, it costs money, and we are listener-supported. You see, the gospel is free. Freely we receive it, freely we give it. All of us on the network, all the ministers and ministries you see, we're not paid employees. We do have paid employees. And that's part of what your support does. It helps us pay our bills, pay our employees, keep the network running. Because without people, we can't do this. Just like without God, we can't do anything. God is a, our source, but God works through people. Hallelujah. And so we, I am believing God for 10,000 partners for this network, for this ministry. 
Billy Lockner Ministries. And let me tell you what I mean when I say partners. I mean, if you belong to a local church, your tithe, and you're being fed at a local church, your tithe belong in that church, according to the scripture. You pay tithes where you're fed. But the Bible says we are to give tithes and offerings. You can give your offerings to Billy Lock Live Ministries, especially if you're enjoying this, this network and the teachings and the ministries from this network. You can give an offering. And so I would ask that you would be one of the 10,000 partners that I'm believing God for for this network to give $25 a month. That way we can pay all of our bills, our employees, our upgrades for our equipment, our building maintenance. We need a roof on one of the buildings now it's leaking. And, and that's not begging. That's just being truthful. That's just telling you how it is. We're listener supported. So through your free will offerings of the people, we keep this ministry going. Let me tell you something. Billy Lock Live Ministries is good ground to sow your seed in. I promise you, dear friends, you'll get a return in the name of Jesus. I set myself in agreement right now, Father, with everyone that has given and everyone that, can, that gives on a monthly basis and continue to give. Lord, I set myself in agreement with them that their house should suffer no lack. Every bill is paid. Every need is met according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, I thank you right now that every family member, 10 generations down, are saved in their family. Father, they're all walking in divine health and prosperity in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for them, Lord, and continue to bless them as they be a blessing to this ministry and ultimately to the whole wide world because this, this broadcast on the, on the Internet is broadcasting over 200 nations throughout the U.S. and around the world. So, Father, I thank you for them. And, Father, those that you're speaking to them right now, you've touched their heart even as I begin to speak. you touched their heart about giving. Lord, I come into agreement with them right now that every need is met according to your riches and that they shall suffer no lack. If they would just step out in faith, one might say, well, Father, I, I want to give, but I don't have a gift. I don't have a seed to give. Father, your word says that you give seed to the sower. I set myself in agreement right now with that word. That, Lord, I know you can get it to them. Lord, I pray that they will allow it to flow through them back to this ministry and that they will reap a bountiful harvest from their giving in the name of Jesus. That souls around the world will be won from their obedience. And Father, they won't know until they get to heaven the good they've done on this side. And we thank you for it, Father. We receive it done right now by faith. All 10,000 are going to the telephones. And there are several ways you can give. First way you can give, you can go to the website, www.billylocklibministry.com, and you can click on the Give button, and the PayPal button will come up. That's a, a, a secured website. Use your bank card, your debit card, or use your credit card. Give you $25. It'll go right into Billy Lock Live Ministry, and nobody will see your, your information except the people that work here in the finance office. Another way you can give is you can come out physically to Billy Lockley Ministries. The address is 3463 Oak Road Church Road, Lumberton, North Carolina, 28360. 3463 Oak Road Church Road, Lumberton, North Carolina, 28360. Or you could mail your $25 uh, partnership gift in. Again, the address is WLPS 3463 Oak Grove Church Road, Lumberton, North Carolina, 28360. Sister Kay, them always around here. They'll give you a receipt for your giving. And, and thanks to our federal government, it's a tax write-off because Billy Locklear Ministry is a 5013C nonprofit ministry. And every dollar you give, friend, you can write it off on your income tax. Thank you so much for your giving, all you that have given. We love you so much. Thank you for continuing to view it. And thank you for your comments. Thank you for your calls and your prayers. And I'm telling you, you ain't seen nothing yet because you can't beat God giving. Amen. Brother James, come and minister to us in song. Thank you. 
have something to praise God for What about you? What about you, you and you? What about you, you and you? I have something to praise Him for What about you? He woke me this morning, opened my eyes Let me see a brand new day I have something to praise Him for What about you? What about you, you and you? What about you, you and you? I have something to praise him for. What about you? You give me food when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. I have something to praise him for. What about you? What about you, you and you? What about you, you and you? I have something to praise him for. What about you? I went in the valley one day to pray. So got happy I stayed all day. I have something to praise him for. What about you? What about you, you and you? What about you, you and you? I have something to praise him for. What about you? Sailor and man, I am glad. He missed the soul he thought he had. I have something to praise him for. What about you? What about you, you and you? What about you, you and you? I have something to praise him for. What about you? What about you, you and you? What about you, you and you? I have something to praise them for. What about you? Amen. Thank you, Brother James. I have something to praise him for. What about you? Hallelujah. We've been talking about prayer in about five minutes at 8.30. We're going to open the prayer line. And you're going to have an opportunity to dial in with your prayer requests and or any questions that you may have about anything we talked about this evening. Now, the phone number, the open line is 910-521-1726. 910 910-521- 1726. If you don't want to talk online, my assistant, uh, Sister Kirsten, is out there. You can call and she'll answer the private line. That number is 910-521-3101. 910-521-3101. We've been talking about prayer. And we read over there in 1 John 5, 14. That if God hears us, if we ask according to his will, we know he hears us. And then because we know that he hears us, verse 15 says, then we have the petition that we ask for. God is in the prayer answering business. And that's why it is imperative and very, very crucial to the believer that you develop a strong prayer life because it's communicating with God and God communicating with you. And so if you're not praying, dear friends, you're not receiving. That's how God set the system up. We looked over there in the beginning prayer is, is to ask. Like kids, when they, when they want something, first start talking. It's all about them. Ask. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And then when they learn a little 
mature a little bit, they begin to seek out their parents and try to satisfy them, to make them happy, and, and the parent will reward them. And so that's what we do when we begin to seek God. We seek him for who he is and, and who we are to him, and he blesses us. And, and then we begin to knock on the door. We begin to bombard heaven with praises because he's been so good to us. We begin to knock on the door of, of, of heaven, saying, God, I thank you for blessing me. I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for keeping my family and my relationship. I thank you for my gainful employment. I thank you for my successful business. I thank you for life. I thank you for my health and my strength. And we just begin to praise and worship him. That's when we're knocking, dear friends. And so you do all this, and we've gone through now, and we've shown you the different levels of prayer. So that now you know how to pray. We found out over there the model of prayer is not a mole, but it is a model how to pray. What things to incorporate in our prayer when we talk to Father God. And that's what Jesus taught his disciples. And so it's still apropos for today. We can still use this model. Pray the word. And God will hear you every time. And then you can say as I say, God always answers my prayer. Why? Because I pray according to his will, which is the Bible. I don't pray what I feel. I don't pray what I think. I pray according to his will, the Bible. You don't need to try to make up a prayer, dear friends. Read your Bible and pray the Bible back to God. Give him his word. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 says that he will hasten, hurry up to perform his word. So why give him anything else? God is never going to do anything above his word. That's all he's going to perform. So why not give it back to him in prayer? Prayer is talking to God and God talking to us. We'll continue to teach until we get phone calls. Jesus prayed that his disciples would become one. So we were over there in John uh, seven, uh, 17. Look at verse 11. John chapter 17, verse 11. And he says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that I may be one, as we are one. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus is praying to his heavenly father that we all be one in him as he and his father are one. That's how much he loves us, church. That we be one with him as he's one with the father. That was his whole desire. Then Jesus prayed that his disciples would have joy. See, Christ knew that our needs for happiness. He, he knew our needs for happiness. So he prayed that we'd have joy. Look at verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy. See? That they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. God don't want us walking around here all sad, broke, busted, and disgusted. He wants us to have joy. And when you don't have any money in your pocket, when your needs are not met, the needs of your family are not met, you don't have joy, dear friends. We see it right here in the scripture. It's Jesus' desire that we have the same joy he has. He has joy from pleasing the Father. He came down, took on an earth suit, a body, came and redeemed mankind back unto the Father through himself. And that gave the Father joy. Now he has joy. Now he's asking his Father to allow us, oh, how glorious that is, to have the same joy that he and his daddy enjoy. Oh, think about that, church. Look how much he loves us. He wants us to enjoy his joy. Same joy he had with his father. And then uh, Jesus prayed that the father would keep his disciples from evil. See, he knew that we'd be under attack. He, see, he knew that the devil, even after he defeated him, 
would think he was still a roaring lion. Because the scripture says he walks around as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion, but he keeps... See, thank you, Lord. See, the battle is in our minds, church. The battle is in our mind. You remember the place that Jesus was crucified? It was called Skull Hill. Skull. Your skull? This is where your mind is, your soul, your intellect. This is where the battle is. The devil comes and sits right on your shoulder, tell you, you ain't going to make it. You're not giving your tithe money to the church. You ain't going to be able to pay your mortgage. You, you, you know your car payments do. That's how he speaks to us. But he doesn't have any power over us. He's been defeated. And see, Jesus knew this. So listen to what he asked the Father. He asked the Father to keep us from evil. Because he knew we'd be under attack. Okay? Verse 15. Over there in John 17. Verse 15. Here's what he says. He's a, he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. See, he didn't want to take us out of the world. Why? Because Jesus already overcome the world for us. So there was no need to remove us out of the world. So he asked the Father in verse 15, he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. So the devil can't hurt you, friends. Jesus got you covered with the blood. He left all the power with the church when he left and went back to be with the Father. So we have all the power. And in series past, we've been talking about how to use the power, especially when we talked about faith. It's voice activated. You speak the word. And see, your job is to speak the word. It's God's job to perform his word. We read our, uh, Isaiah 55, chapter number 11, uh, chapter number 55, verse number 11 says, God's word will not return unto him void. That word void means empty or unaccomplished. See, God sends his word. We see over there in Psalms 102 where he sent his word and it healed his people. See, remember the centurion that came to him and asked him to come to his house? And when Jesus was getting ready to go, the centurion said, well, I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house. He says, I understand authority. I'm a man on authority. Just send the word, he told him. Send the word, and my servant will be made whole. And Jesus told him, he said, man, I, I haven't seen such great faith in all of Jerusalem as this. And he went on for the, for the, for the, for the benefit of those that was with him, and he, he preached. He says, I haven't seen such great faith in all Jerusalem. And he told that centurion, it is, so you, it is just as you see it. And right after that, one of the servants came from the centurion's house and said, your servant's being made whole. And the centurion said, what time was it? It was around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, at the same time he was talking to Jesus, Jesus sent the word. And the scripture says that God is the same. Hallelujah, church. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still sending his word healing the people. His people. Because God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. We're talking about prayer. Prayer is the system that God has set up to communicate with us. And we said communication is a two-way street. You talk, one listen. Then the other one listen while the other one talk. Don't just pray, get up, walk away. Sit and allow God to speak back to you. He will. And begin to train yourself to listen to that small, still voice of God. Because he's always talking, friends. God is always talking, but are we listening? Prayer line's open. The, the number is 910-521-1726. The open line, 521-1726. The private line is 910-521-3101. Jesus prayed for his disciples to be sanctified. Holy. Living is so important. Sanctification comes by the word. That means to be set apart. Sanctification, sanctified, means to be set apart from the world. Verse 17, here's what Jesus said. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. What is truth? Thy word. God's word is truth. 
sanctify them. How? Through thy truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. Then he prayed for his disciples to have eternal life. See, Jesus loved people. He loved us. He did all this for us. He took on a bodysuit and came to the earth for us. He left heaven and came to redeem us, mankind. He prayed for his disciples to have eternal life. Here's what he says in verse 24. John 17, 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. Why? For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. See how much Jesus loved us? He learned that love from his father. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So now look at the heart of Jesus. He wants us to have eternal life so we can share the glory that his father God gave him for redeeming us. Part of that glory was to have a name that's above every name. At that name, every tongue shall confess Every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, dear friends, we see then that without prayer, we're missing out on what God has already set up the system to operate in. We're to pray without ceasing. That's what Jesus told us. That's our instruction. Pray without ceasing. We need to learn how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Every believer should be baptized with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, same person, with the evidence of praying or speaking in unknown tongues. It's a gift from God for believers. He's a helper. He's a paraclete. He prays the perfect prayer every time. Sometimes we know not how to pray or what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit knows everything. He is the physical God in the earth now. Jesus left. He sent the Holy Ghost. And he told the disciples, he'll put you in remembrance. He'll, he'll call to your remembrance everything that I said. Yeah, he's a helper. He won't read the Bible for you, but he certainly will interpret it for you. And if you read it, he'll bring it back to your memory. Hallelujah. Look over there, Romans chapter number 8 with me real quick. Romans chapter number 8. Every believer should, be, should pray in the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, verse 26. And this is Paul speaking. And I, I think he did a very good job here. Romans chapter number 8, verse 26. And here's what it says. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings. Which cannot be altered. In other words, he's making sounds that we don't understand, but God does. See? We don't know what we should pray for. But he does. He prays a perfect prayer. Amen. Let's get a second witness. Go to me. Go with me to Ephesians. Chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. And grab verse 18 when you get over there. Ephesians Chapter number 6, verse 18. Now, write the scriptures down on your notepad because you're going to want to go back and study this in your Bible study time. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you real good. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. For all the saints. If you're born again, if you confess with your mouth over there in Romans 10, 9 and 10, and allow the Lordship of Jesus Christ to take over your life, this is talking about you. You're a saint now. You're sanctified, set apart from the world. You should be praying in the Spirit. This is a gift from God. Just ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and receive it. You don't have to beg, you don't have to plead, you don't have to tarry. Just ask for it. If you're born again, if you confess Jesus is your Lord, you're authorized to be baptized 
with the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians about the same subject. 1 Corinthians, and I want you to look at verse, uh, chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13, look at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 13, Paul's speaking, and he's doing a very good job of explaining. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. Love, love, love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, rejoice in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you pray a perfect prayer to God every time. Now, we've studied... In this study, we in this class, these sessions, we've studied many faces of prayer, especially in relationship to God the Father and God the Son. Now, we learn that God, the Holy Spirit, through prayer, can speak faith from our inner person and address all of our human needs. Why should we pray by the Spirit? What, what would be the purpose of that, Pastor? Good question. Since prayer, then, is essential to spiritual life and growth, the Holy Spirit must be involved. Why? The Holy Spirit is the sustainer of all spiritual life. Say that again, Pastor. The Holy Spirit is the sustainer, the keeper of spiritual life. All right? Let's get some Bible on that. Go to Galatians chapter number 5 real quick with me. Galatians chapter number 5. And I want you to look at verse 25. Galatians 5 and 25. The Holy Spirit is sustainer of spiritual life. Galatians 5, 25, and here's what it says. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. See what it says? If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In verse 26, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Prayer by the Spirit conforms to the Bible. Prayer by the Spirit conforms to the Bible. The two are in harmony. God's Word and God's Spirit are inseparable. They are one. God's word and God's spirit are one. They're inseparable. Prayer by the spirit will glorify God. See, in this kind of prayer, what happens? Material or human help becomes secondary because it's all about spirit, you see. The central emphasis of praying in the spirit is God's glory. Not one's own. It's God's glory. Praying in the spirit. It's not, it's not about, there's no flesh involved. It's all glorifying 
God. So then when we pray in the spirit, we bypass all the flesh, period. It's all God. That's why every believer should, should pray in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of other tongues. We have a prayer request. We're praying for the Stone family. Husband has Alzheimer's. And uh, he's had a heart attack Sunday. And the family wants us to pray that he doesn't have another one. We're talking about prayer. and The Bible says that signs and wonders shall follow the teaching of the word. And any subject we teach on, whether it be faith, whether it be healing, whether it be prayer, whether it be finances. We are believing God for signs and wonders to confirm that word. So we have a prayer request from the Stone family. We're going to set our faith in agreement with their faith. They're believing God for deliverance of her husband and a father, a brother, a grandfather, perhaps. God, you're all powerful. You all see him. You know all, and you know this stone family. So, Father, I come to you right now in faith, thanking you, first of all, for your love kindness, thanking you for your word that is true. Your word is truth, and that you are all powerful. And that you are God all by yourself. And besides you, Lord, there is no other by which man can be saved. So we come to you this evening, Father, in adoration. We thank you that you are God. <laughs> we thank you that you care so much for us. That you sent Jesus over there in the 38th chapter of Acts. To heal us. Jesus, thank you, sir, for coming. We see in Acts chapter number 38 how you came and how God anointed you with the Holy Ghost and power. And how you went about healing all that were oppressed by the devil. And Father, uh, the Stone family, the husband has been pitted. And mess with. And Alzheimer's placed on him by the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. I curse Alzheimer's at the root. And command it to wither and die. In the name of Jesus. Right now. I speak to your mind daddy. That your mind be made whole. That you be set free in Jesus' name. That your memory shall be as Caleb said when he was 80. I'm well able to take, me my, take my mountain. Give me my mountain now. I'm well able. And you will be able to say that, Daddy. In the name and the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Father, I set myself in agreement with this family. That the Stone family's husband will not have another heart attack. Satan, I come against you in this area. I curse you and command you to take your hand off the Stone family and off this husband right now in the name of Jesus. His heart would not dare attack him. This is the heart that God gave him. Now, I speak to you, heart. I speak to every artery, every muscle, every carpuscle, and I command you with the authority in the name of Jesus to be made whole. To function decent and in order the way you was made in the image of Almighty God. According to Genesis 1.26. In the name of Jesus. I declare it. I decree it. It is so. Right now. In the name of Jesus. And Father, if there be any in this family that don't know the Lord Jesus for the partner of their sin. I send the word this evening to them. That they accept the Lord. As the Lord of their life. In the name of Jesus. 
And Father, we covenant to give you all the praise for all that you're doing in this family and all that you have done. And we count it done right now by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The number is 910-521-1726. I shall be listening for the praise report. It is already done. Receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for that word. I thank you, Lord, that your word will not return into you void. In Jesus' name, amen. See, dear friends, prayer by the Spirit will glorify God. See, in this kind of prayer, man is totally removed. Good evening, caller. You're on the air. How may we help you? Yes, I would like you to if I can I'm, I'm sorry, you're cutting off. I can't hear you. What did you say? I would like to hear from me and my family's prayers. I'm going okay. through some things in my marriage, and I need God to be Okay, for your marriage, and you have sickness in the family as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, you believe God to do this for you? Yes. All right. Let me link my faith with your faith. You ready to pray? Yes. Father, we thank you for my sister. We come into agreement with her according to Matthew 18, 19. We're two. We're touching and we're agreeing. And your word says, Father, whatever we ask God for in the name of Jesus, we have it. Father, I'm asking for restoration of this marriage right now. We know marriage is the institution that you began. This is how you instituted family in the earth. So, Father, I come into agreement that this marriage is healed. It's made whole. Love is renewed and alive in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now that they will look at one to the other and they will have newness and joy in their heart. The joy that Jesus talked about. The joy that he has. There will be no animosity. There will be no unforgiveness, Lord. They both shall forgive right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. As, as they are forgiven. So thank you, Lord. As they are forgiving one another, Father, you are forgiving them for whatever trespass they've trespassed. Now, Father, bring the children close to their mother and to their father. Reunite this family, Father, and use them as a beacon light in the community to win others unto you, Lord. Lord, if there is any sickness in the family, I declare and decree that they are made whole right now. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet in the name of Jesus. Father, if they suffer any financial need or lack, I declare and decree that from this moment on, every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for it. For it is you that we trust. It is you that we have our joy and faith and, and life in. And so we thank you for restoration now. We thank you that it is done. By faith, we receive it done right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, my sister, and your whole house. Thank you. All right. Good night. See, the Holy Spirit never ministers alone. He's always ministering with man or with Christ. See, he's a helper. That's what Jesus told the disciples. I'm going to ask the Father to send you another comforter, another helper. And he'll lead you into all truth. What's left out of all? Nothing. You'll have the answer to everything when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in another tongue. Because he'll lead you into all truth. And God speaks mysteries, secrets, hallelujah, through him to you. He's a helper. John chapter 16. You're in, John, uh, you're in Galatians. Go to John chapter 16. Real, hurry, 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 because the time is going real fast. John chapter number 16. I want you to see this. John chapter 16. Look at verse 7 with me. John chapter 16, verse 7. It's in the red. Jesus is speaking. Look what he says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, see, I told you it was a helper, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And he will, and, and when he has come, Verse 8, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father. 
and you see me no more. See, he's sending a helper. That's why he's here. So prayer without the spirit is ineffective. Say that again, Pastor. Prayer without the spirit is ineffective. See, it is prayer through the mind instead of the spirit. That's why it's ineffective. Its contents are inadequate. But when you pray in the spirit, it's effective. Because mind doesn't have anything to do with it. It's all spirit. All the flesh is out of the way, you see. Only the Holy Spirit knows God's thoughts. Look right there real quick, 1 Corinthians. Look with me, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And we're going to look at verse number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Look what it says. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Man doesn't know, but God knows. Dear friends, the clock on the wall says time is almost gone, but I never like to close the broadcast or telecast without giving you an opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me ask you a very important question. Do you know where, if you die tonight, do you really know for certain where you spend eternity? God has made your answer very simple in his word. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, he tells you how, just by making his son, Jesus the Christ, your Lord and Savior. Believe and repeat the following prayer with me. Believe it with your heart. Change your life. God in heaven, I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead to give me a special place with you. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving all my sins. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit. I receive now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, you were born again. Your name is written in the Lamb Book of Heaven. When you leave this place, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Now, I would suggest to you one, that's, that's the best decision you're ever going to make because that decision will take you all the way into eternity. Now, make one more wise decision. Get into a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church. Learn how to live this Christian life. Get baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's your help, you see. That's the power to help you live this Christian life. If you don't know a Bible teaching church, my name is Dr. Larry McEachin, affectionately called Dr. Mac. And I pastor a church. The name of our church is Basic Training Christian Ministry International. We're located in Fairmount, North Carolina, seven miles south of downtown Fairmount, straight out Main Street, Highway 41, at Oakdale Church Road and Highway 41. We're located on the right-hand side. The church address is 120 Oakdale Church Road. The church phone number is 910-734-4762. Sunday services at 8 a.m. Tuesday Bible study, 730. Prayer, the hour of prayer, Thursday, 6 p.m. to 7. Come join us. We love people there. Come bring your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll give you a Bible. But, dear friends, if you prayed that prayer with me and you got saved, give us a call and let us know that you got saved. Today is the 10th of August, 2016. This is your new birthday. Listen, God loves you, and he sent me this way just for you. And so remember, Jesus is Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you.